Hello, hello. My name is Erica Kiros, and I am here with actor and writer Julia Datt, also known as At This Model Eats A Lot on TikTok. With 76,000 followers and rising, Julia has been featured in the UK news publication The Sun. She is known for her work empowering women to prioritize their sensual selves without judgment or bias. Julia, how are you today? I'm really good. How are you? I'm doing great. So tell us about your TikTok presence, This Model Eats A Lot. Why did you decide to start it and what was the inspiration behind it? So I've had quite an array of life experience over the years, having lived in five countries and working in different industries and meeting a whole bunch of different people from different cultures and really understanding their motivations and their triggers. Mm -hmm. And for a number of years, I was searching for a more authentic, raw platform to present these findings and insight mm -hmm. discussion on topics that in some cultures are just whispered about, in mm -hmm. others, you know, they're only discussed at girls' nights. And I really wanted to take all of these findings and put them into a more commercial space where everybody could grow and learn from each other. TikTok ultimately became that platform because it invites vulnerability and even messiness as opposed to a space of toxic positivity and perfection like other popular platforms mm -hmm. on social media. And the TikTok community, it's incredibly supportive. Uh, people detail their problems in the comments. So it really helps create a sense of community. It helps people band together. Um, so people are really trying to connect without the facade. My account is like an extension of Sex in the City updated for 21 with positive mm -hmm. Samantha Jones vibes for the mental dating space that I'm in right now. Yeah. It's a safe space for people to come and discuss their dating experiences without the fear of being judged. Ironically, I do consider myself quite conservative in the grand scheme of everything that's out there and my mm -hmm. content does reflect this, but I think the honesty has really resonated with people. I guess why it has had the response that it has had. And to yeah. be honest, it's been as therapeutic for me creating the content as it has been for people who, who watch it. So you have a TikTok series, 17 Ways to O, that's been really popular connecting with your followers. Tell us more about that and what inspired it. There's so much little information to be found online about alternative ways to mm -hmm. O as a woman. Mm -hmm. So I really wanted to bring to light all of the information that I had and make it more commercially known. So there's a strong spiritual element to this as well, as many of the ways are about owing from different chakra points on your body, which can only be opened or stimulated through yoga or meditation or massage. So along with a few rare articles that have been published online that I managed to somehow dig up and find, and I also go into detail explaining what these are, what each O is, and also add anecdotal evidence because it's important to know that not every single person has the same reaction to something. There are so many different factors. I love that. I feel like your content is very therapeutic in a lot of ways. And even just bringing that up, you talk a lot about chakra points, meditation, yoga, massage, touch. How do all of those spiritual elements also influence your content? And why do you think it's important for someone's journey to sensuality? It's about being more connected with your mind and flowing from that mm -hmm. your body. So exploring everything that your body is capable of with curiosity and a sense of play and really humbling yourself that there is so much in the universe to learn and discover and that we humans have really only scratched the surface. I think a reason why this is never talked about in our culture is because there's still a lot of fear and mystique around Eastern medicine and treatments. What is out there is either a watered down version adapted for the Western world or, you know, experts using their heritage and creating their own versions of something, for instance, yoga. Mm -hmm. For many people, science is the be all end all to everything. And so, so many of these alternate therapies, for instance, sound healing, have not had formal studies performed. Therefore, many hard science people do think that it's not worth exploring. Mm -hmm. However, I'm a huge advocate for cultivating a strong relationship with yourself in order to develop a solid intuition so that you can really listen to yourself and your body and decide what is right for you. I think that talking about this can be seen as a taboo for some people because I think people do like to stick to what's safe and do what they're told and not explore out of fear mm -hmm. because... I mean, let's face it, digging deep is scary. Thinking outside of the box is simply so difficult for some, especially in this current environment. I mean, people are just trying to manage their daily responsibilities. Culture and religion also uh, do play a major factor. 
for me. Yeah, absolutely. Do you mind talking a little bit more about the sound healing that you were talking about as well? How did you discover that? Sound healing is something I had done a couple of times before this, but I had really mm -hmm. resonated with it. I think that with these alternative therapies, it's, you know, there admittedly are a lot of people out there who maybe aren't as talented. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> and I consider myself quite an intuitive person. I found a teacher finally here that I really resonated with and I only started going to their classes. And it took a couple of months for me to start really seeing very, very deep effects, which was what led to the O ultimately. And it happened on two occasions and I didn't know what was happening. I was completely shocked. I was, I was ashamed. I was you know, nervous. I was trying to keep it to myself, but eventually I did have to talk asked the teacher what happened because um, after mm -hmm. the class I I tried to get up and I was dizzy I was you know having head spins so mm -hmm. we discussed it and you know bless him he he was just so professional about it um, yeah. I didn't say the words of exactly what happened but I think he figured it out and he just said you know take deep breaths and a couple of girls were also there and they said you know what this is the goal of Kundalini. Have you done Kundalini before? And I said, no, but I don't think I should. <laughs> if that's <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that's it's just so interesting. experiences like that. And then I researched it and I found very little information about it online, but a few people had written that it had happened to them as well. So mm -hmm. it's really just, you know, bringing to light amazing practices such as this, but you have to really do the work beforehand in terms of your yoga and your meditation and, cultivating that relationship with yourself in order to have these incredible out-of-body experiences. That's really, really interesting. And you even mentioned just now, like how there's shame involved with, with the O for so many people and so many women. Why do you think that is? It's very difficult for women because the mistreatment of female sexuality is rampant mm -hmm. and it does negatively affect every aspect of our lives. Uh, female mm -hmm. sexuality is just not prioritized and it's been turned a blind eye to until mm -hmm. now which is what we're trying to do with TikTok and you know mm -hmm. series like Sex in the City and sex education and just getting the word out there about sex education essentially. Women do continue to be slut shamed in both media and society and this is pervasive even today with the Madonna whore complex whether by mm -hmm. use of um, passive aggressive language in the media or strict cultural values that define a woman's intrinsic value by the way she uses her body sexually, to yep. the way that women are depicted in adult films, to the fact that the full anatomy of the clitoris was not revealed until 2005 by an Australian urologist. So it's really no wonder that women have been conditioned mm -hmm. to be afraid of their natural biological desires and to be told that even having them is shameful. And this is part of the broader problem that we don't encourage women to be happy single in any culture. Society simply expects loyalty and sacrifice in a woman, whether as mothers or wives or career women. This unfortunately means that many women are pressured to forego a satisfying sexual connection in order to secure a partner who by all other accounts is a good person. So you have these very unusual kind of dating mantras that are popularized, such as, um, don't kiss a man for three months or even don't sleep with a man for three months. Mm. So that puts the blame wholly on the woman if she deviates from the rule and it absolves the other party of any responsibility. I'd say a toad is still a toad, whether or not you wait three months to kiss him. <laughs> and by that time, you know, you're more emotionally invested, so you're more likely to tolerate an unsatisfactory sexual connection mm -hmm. and therefore more likely to, I coin the term, cheat on your sensual self. You speak a lot about body neutrality. So tell us a little bit more about that. So body neutrality is the next layer to unpeel after body positivity. Body positivity encourages you to love your body, whereas body neutrality tells you that my existence is not about how beautiful you find me or how desirable mm -hmm. you find me. And it's not my responsibility to be lusted after by the world. I can exist just as I am without that pressure and heaviness. So it's, it's something that's very beautiful and it's not really that, it's not really a message that is taught to little girls. I mean, if you think about the language that we employ for young children growing up, it's always like, oh, I love your dress, you look so pretty, 
the entire thing is not about how you look. It's very much about the qualities that you have on the inside. And something interesting I learned, especially when I was modeling and now in the acting space, is that at the base level, everybody is attractive. So what do you have? What do you bring to the table that is going to differentiate you? I had been watching several of your videos where you used to be a runway model. And I saw that it really took a toll on you and you speak about it a lot. How did that experience catapult you to where you are now and how you view the world? It was a gradual effect. As I was finishing up with modeling, I started this Model Eats a lot as a body neutrality brand. Mm -hmm. And that was really relevant to the space that I was in at the time. And now that I've not been modeling for six years now, five years, I've been traveling, I've been living in other places, I'm back to acting. So I'm having all of these different unique experiences that I want to speak about and I want to share with my audience. So that was where how it graduated to sex education and sex positivity. What I want women to know when they scroll through social media and inadvertently compare themselves to what they see on the screen is that it's not your responsibility to be beautiful or to be a certain size for the world. Definitely dress for yourself, do makeup for yourself, have fun for yourself, but don't think it's mandatory to be accepted or loved. You dictate how you're treated by the world, nobody else. It's like the, the whole idea of body neutrality, which I know you feel very passionately about too. That's amazing. Well, I love that you encourage your followers to unapologetically take up space. What's your last tidbit of advice that you would give to those watching? I would say you only have one life. It belongs to you. So cultivate the courage to be disliked. I mean, eat, drink, look how you want, dress how you want in a way that is not hurting others, uh, in a way that feels the most authentic and aligned to you. Engage in consensual, safe sexual experiences that bring you joy mm -hmm. without guilt or shame. There is so much of you to discover. I'm absolutely thrilled and honored and humbled to be part of the sexual revolution thank you so much julia it was a pleasure thank you so much crestful it's so easy as it should be